world is BJ the Chicago Kid. Jason Derulo. Sean McCorn. Shante Moore. Jacob Lattimore. Seven Streeter. It's your girl, Little Mo. Be sure to check out Concert Daily all the time. Age is like second nature. Have you not seen it for 10 plus years? Maybe not, but for us, it feels like home all over again. So. Marsha and I have known each other since we were like 10. 11 years old, so in real life, for, real for years. you all, you know, yeah, it's 15 years and it's nine years that we didn't perform for. For us, we, we've known each other so much longer than just what you've shared with us, that it's just a very natural um, alignment. And thank you for commenting on all my Instagram pictures when I tag you guys, I appreciate it. Always appreciate <laughs> you for tagging. Hearts. Hearts. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's what you did. Two and five. Katie Morris from uh, Philadelphia, representing Main Course Magazine. Uh, we're going to take it back to the days of Black Lily and that whole tour through yeah. the funk and everything. Yeah. Can you expound on that experience for people who aren't familiar with Black Lily? I'm so sorry for anyone who's not familiar with that. That was the best five dollars you could ever spend. Black Lily was was a, a festival in a weekly segments. I mean, we'd be in the studio, a touch of jazz, Axis, uh, Larry Gold studio, and on Tuesday, like the left, that was it. Everyone just stopped. We'd be mid, mid album making. Um, yeah, so Philadelphia, you got Essence every Tuesday. Absolutely. Like That's what real. Like, if this is the 15 plus years that we've been doing it, about to be anyway, um, it was Jill Scott, it was Music Soul Child, it was Bilal, it was Common, it was Erica. That was the first Janet time we Jackson went there. came there at one point. She was on tour and sweaty, maybe 200 capacity. We were all in there. And like Nat said, we were in the studio. We'd work on our idea and give it to the crowd that Tuesday. So the next week, we'd have a whole crowd singing a hook that no one else knew. It was just hours. Back so stage, stage, let's do that. Backstage on those stairs. Oh man, it, it was just, I suppose it kind of, it harked to any renaissance kind of time where these things, these movements are made by a selection of artists who hang out, build, chill together, grow together. Um, it always takes something like that to manifest what then is, I don't know, several different albums and different people, but it, it comes from a meshing. And we were very, um, divinely aligned. We landed in Philly. Right place, right time. Right place, right time. It just and happened to be Philly. It was just bubbling. So yeah, it was amazing. You know what? Fire is a very yeah. divine energy, so I don't know. Building's it's part gone, of the blessing too. Yeah, building's gone, we still here. Any other questions? What's up, man? Hey, what's up, Tom? Um, you know I got soul. So you guys have been doing a lot of touring on your own, a lot of shows on your own, but what's it been like getting the chemistry back together on that stage once again and the closure? For anyone who's come to the tour, we don't miss beats. Time, like Matt said, time for other people is time for you. You know, what me and Nat managed to do collectively is create two different synergies that work so well together, we could have our eyes closed and be able to do that. We've written a lot of songs over the course of, you know, our professional career, but we can still get back on and have the crowd sing back, getting late like it came out yesterday, or we'll say yes like it came out yesterday. So for us, this is just yesterday. It may have taken 10 years to get, you know, back to where we are now, but for us, time in between is just time in between. Yeah, it's a funny thing. Um, I think we kind of did a bit of a switch round. Marsha taught me a lot about the studio in the beginning. I was a a performing arts um, student, a performance poet. I know that I'm very wordy. I got into words with Marshall. We got into that type of value. I think that was our exchange. But then also in the time out, I didn't do as much on the road during my solo time. I, I, I studied, I suppose, and grew as a solo artist in terms of studio. Marsha spent more time on the road than before where you were I didn't studio. want to be an artist. She made me do it. She you know? made me the songstress. I was over getting on stage. So not being a performance poet gave me the sense of freedom on my side of the stage to just be myself. You so know? yeah. So yeah. again, yeah. Not, not, not that we don't understand where the question comes from, but there's so much more to our lives than 
just what maybe the consumer may take. So there's so much in terms of what we've done in that time which is so um, enriching and I'm a firm believer that everything goes the way it's supposed to. Sometimes you have to grow in order to submit to that reality and understand it. So coming back together, I, if anything, I just say that we're stronger maybe from, from walking those paths. I remember Thundercats, <laughs> like He-Man or something, if you put that sword in the air, they will come. <laughs> we just play our roles, we just know what we bring to the table. You know what? <gasps> what will come back to something? Hi. Um, hi. Welcome back. So um, in this time, my, my name is Mona Fletcher from examiner.com, and what can you tell the young people? There's so much happening in the world, and that's what's bringing back the love and the music. How can you inspire? What do, what, how do the young people, we need you to help the young people. So what would you tell the young people just how to stay in the industry and, and do your thing, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't think telling the young people how to stay themselves is about helping them how to stay in the industry. I, I mentor um, young people. I'm a poet first. I Most of this kind of, where have you been that? I, I've been very active within my community. I just haven't been um, attempted to be in the industry in the same way. So I think that what's important for the young people isn't necessarily more guidance of how to be in the industry. I think it's guidance of how to be themselves. Um, how to deal with this time which is so on the eye there's so much especially for the young women right now there's so much enhancement there's so much getting away from yourself and and who you are um, so I think the most important message to to the youth right now is um, about self-awareness and self-understanding and not so much um, just on this kind of trying to make it thing but about being not trying about being who you are. Um, so that's very much the message that I, I know I push. <laughs> Go easy on the Use your Twitter, your Facebook, or your Instagram for more than just turning up. You know, just turn up some other way. Like you have voices now. And lift every voice is like a common saying, but please lift your voice. There's so many things that are going on in the world where we're not speaking to each other about. Like we'll point the finger but we won't talk to each other like I use my social media to open these lines of communications whether it's through my music like I make very sexy music yeah. I say that to say I add a level of responsibility to that whether it was through the late nights and early mornings video whether it was all the things that we've done to protect your heart like we were talking about the songs that we've written way back then whether it was mistress or sunshine it was personal affirmations that we'd only get years later. We were 21 and 22 when we made the first album. So any excuse that a 21 or 22 year old gives me now, I'm like, oh yeah, nah, -uh. We didn't have Twitter, didn't have Facebook, didn't have Instagram, I didn't have all of these moments to share with anyone else. So please talk to each other. We're losing each other. It's not about the industry, it's about you. You can be you here, so you can be you out there.